little windy, I apologize. So we talked about how defining self uh, is about thoughts, expressed as words, expressed as words that hopefully influence other people, either be it encouragement or action or a little bit of both. And today, uh, you can probably see I've got my, uh, my writing suit on, I'm muddy, and I'm at the top of the mountain. And, <coughs> and uh, <clears throat> for me, what I've found is that it's important to do Dan things. Things that are quintessentially Dan, as, as quintessentially Dan as I can get. They don't have to be unique, they don't have to be this or that, but things that are just me. And I find great meaning in doing them, particularly when I have conventional things to, to deal with. Uh, you know, the you know, paperwork, you know, things around the house. I find great meaning in dropping those and going and doing a Dan thing. And some people would say, oh, it's irresponsible or it's this or that. And you know what? In my 53 years, it's March uh, 2023 uh, in Arizona, is that I've done all that stuff. Now, all stuff has its time and its place, but you know, I'm not so interested in doing that anymore. That's not to say I'm being irresponsible, it's just I'm not being a drone to things that I don't really care about as much anymore. And you know, I, I love that. I just, I just love that. I think it's very freeing and um, I encourage that. But that's me. Now, on the journey to self, on the discovery of self, I encourage those who hear this, those for whom this resonates, to think about things that are purely you that you love to do. And in, in the conventional sense, uh, people will talk about like, you know, uh, taking a ladies night out, you know, they drink wine and, and go get their nails done or something like that. Whatever, fine, that's fine. But it's not necessarily recreational in nature. Uh, you know, for instance, it took great effort to come up here uh, today and skill and uh, balls. You know, this is not something that just anyone can do. And that's part of the fun for me, but it's also about me being me and just being me. like. It sounds like I'm bragging about coming up here. And to a stranger, I would, but to myself, I'm like, no, this is just Dan being Dan, doing Dan things. And that is so important when it comes to self, because in this ever noisy world where everything is at your fingertips, if you wish, it's important to put that down or put anything down, whatever, whatever is in your face and just go, no, it's me now. And I find that sometimes that decision is important, but sometimes it's scary because I make the decision to do something Dan and I don't know what it is. And I'm in an environment where there's everything that I'm supposed to be, you know, grocery shopping, you know, something about the kids, you know, something about the house. It's all up there, right? So sometimes just removing myself from my usual environment without even a plan is so invigorating because then I can even come back and have a fresh perspective on the things I quote need to do and a fresh perspective on self that I am not defined by the conventional things in my life even though I might be defined by others as such but for me for myself I do not define myself as you know the guy who keeps a tire pressure in his car and uh, always uh, cleans his gutters or, or these kind of things right uh, and um, it's, it's about, for me, it's the concept of compost. Now, I'm not a farmer, but I've experienced really good, as I think we all have, really good foods. And uh, there are seeds you can get, there's uh, you know, good dirt, there's uh, air, wind, you know, sun, all these factors. But compost. Where are the worms? Where's the manure? Where is the essential magic that makes this work? And for me, having Dan days, doing Dan things, is very important. This is compost building. And sometimes, just like compost, it's smelly and it has organic elements. And there's worms in there and there's you know manure and there's dirt and there's bugs. But it is the essential thing, the magic element that makes it magic. 
and you can break it down into scientific elements if you want, but you will lose the magic. I guarantee you that you cannot create awesome compost in a science lab unless it has been made somewhere else and brought to the lab and then the lab understands the elements. But the lab will never create the elements to make the magic. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is create the magic of your own compost within your own soul. Call it self, call it whatever you want, but don't diminish its importance because that is the magic that makes you, you, and you have to feed that, in my opinion. And that making it healthy and robust is part of being a powerful self because all true selves are powerful. What makes them powerful? Well, it's for the self to say. But in my case, it's being defined by the things that I define. And uh, it's very good. It's very good. It's, it's about building, building the compost. The other analogy is <clears throat> keeping the fire alive. In the, the, native, um, the northern native tribes uh, of Canada and Alaska, I mean, we're talking like, you know, negative 50, 60 degrees, winds blowing crazy, you know, like literally no food anywhere in sight. Uh, they will often keep in their, in their native culture uh, sustenance, they will often keep a little leather pouch around their neck. And in that is a little bit of seal oil and in that is a wick. And that is where the flame is kept so that they don't have to make fire every time they go. And often I think, think of like the compost, the elements of of essential self and I think of often the fire keeper that you're not keeping a roaring flame but you're keeping the sacred fire of yourself alive and I propose in today's discussion is doing things that are just you it could be with a group of people but it's something that's distinctively you and maybe and it's going to be distinctively you in how we say in contrast to other people and while, I, like today, my distinctively thing was just to hop on the 650 and run up to the top of the mountain, I have no purpose for being here other than to be here. I have uh, no group ride coming with me. I'm not training myself to do anything. I'm not testing a new element of the bike. I'm not, you know, testing, you know, I, have, I, don't have, I don't have a new tire on the bike. I'm just simply taking time that I have and using it to do a damn thing. And sometimes in the case of hoping that the compost that I create and rich in today will yield something tomorrow or even later today. I have no idea what it is. I have no idea what it is. And that's kind of the scary part because in modern culture, we think of things like, you know, you plan it out. A plus B equals C. One plus two equals three. Business plan, five-year plan, productivity, ROI. But all of that needs to be done from the sense of self. So, I think that's an, I think that's enough, but it's very, very important. It, it is crucially important and ultimately powerful because it's talking about keeping the sacred flame alive and only you can do that because it's for you, by you, with you. I could keep saying it, but it's the same as it's the same concept. And, uh, you know, you are your own expert. And when you search self and when you achieve self, you will become your own farmer and your own expert. And uh, I just wanna, uh, as I've said before, I'm not saying that this is new and original. I'm just revealing, as if I found a treasure in the ground, revealing something that I have found. And hopefully that is encouraging for you uh, just to hear it being said and maybe encouraging that it even exists, uh, which is ultimately what uh, you know life is ultimately about other than sharing the things that we have. So there we go. Uh, I want to say something diminutive, but I want to say powerful teachings from the top of the mountain, from the, the heart of self.